Welcome back, guys, to Bar Cutter Chats with your girl, Nigeria and Sydney. We are back bringing you a hot, steamy weekend. Some mm, risque opinions. And, of course, our Potomac review. So we want to thank y'all for tuning in again this week. It is our 11th episode. We're so glad to have all of our followers and we appreciate all the feedback. Just make sure you are sharing our episodes, that you are commenting on them, and just keep spreading the word. So please stay tuned for the entire episode. Yes. So you can get all of the juicy stuff that we're going to talk about. We don't have a food review for this week. Even though Sydney just ordered some food that she's never had before. It just came in the door. So if she does take a little nibble off of that, maybe she can throw in a food review at the end. It's Shake Shack. I think some of y'all have had it, but I have not tried it yet. So we'll see. So if anybody out there is a Shake Shack fan, go ahead and hit Sydney up. I've never heard of them before, so it'll be new to me as well. But we are going to inform you guys about our wonderful, eventful weekend. Mind you, we really haven't gone out out since the whole pandemic. I mean, we've tried on multiple occasions for friends' birthdays and whatnot. It just never really worked out how we wanted it to. But this weekend was pretty successful, I would say. We actually did a little tour. We left from Houston on Friday after work, went to Austin, had a bachelor party for our friend, and then left from Austin Saturday morning, went to Dallas. One of my friends was getting married, went to the wedding, and then came back to Houston on Sunday, woke up and went to work today. So I'm very tired, very exhausted, but of course I had to be here for you guys and let y'all know all the juicy little stuff that happened. She went to work. I have been off all day because it is Indigenous People's Day. And my company is super white, and they give us off all the PLC holidays. So cheers to Indigenous Day, which I think has been renamed as Columbus Day, but fact check me, Google that. But I have not been at work. I've been in my house. (laughs) I really wish I could have been off today to just like rest and recover, especially because I was hungover yesterday, like nobody's business. But we got through work today. We're off work now. I'm just thanking God that I didn't fall asleep there because I was tired, child, I was tired. I'm not as young as I used to be. I can't bounce back. Yeah, no, I'd like, we got back Sunday. We got back, I got back to my house at like 2.30ish and I was probably asleep by five and I did not wake up until 2 a.m. this morning. So, but then I've been up because I'm a YouTube head and I cannot stay off that goddamn platform. I'm working on it. Pray for me, y'all. Well, if y'all are on YouTube, you know, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Bark of the Chats, if y'all are on there. Very much appreciate it. We, you know, we're working our way up. Shout out to our 12 subscribers. Yes, you know, y'all got to start somewhere. And y'all okay. the ones that came down, y'all stand down for the come up. So we definitely appreciate you guys. Exactly. We are still coming up. And so the fact that, you know, we just try to stay consistent for you all and keep bringing y'all juicy stuff like we're about to get into. So really, we kind of wanted to shape this though around unpopular opinions because I feel like we came across a a few unpopular opinions throughout our weekend, pretty much kind of starting Friday night with the boys in Austin. Shout out to our high school crew. Yes, all of our friends they actually said that some of us, some of them do tune in and listen to our podcast. You know, we've grown up with these guys since, like, I've been around most of them since elementary school. But elementary, middle school, high school, we've all hung around the same guys. One of our closest friends is getting married in November, so he had a bachelor party this weekend in Austin. It was so lit. Me and Sydney were the only two girls there. Yes, we were. That is what she means by an unpopular opinion. Because we was... You know, some, most strippers were wondering why we were there. They were like, where are your wives? And they're like, they're not here. And they're like, oh, why are they here? Baby, we've been here. Ain't going nowhere. You know what I'm saying? Okay. We the homegirls. We the, we the niggas, damn near. The home. The bitches was over there because of us. It, no, but really, that's what I was really about to say. Like, you always want to make sure you got some bad bitch friends to take to you, take to the strip club with you if your wife cannot attend, you know? Because we definitely brought the girls, we made them feel more comfortable instead of it just being a corner full of niggas. Right. 
and you know of course we had the vip you know we had the whole section we had the bitches we had the bottles bitches was taking shots it was lit bitches want to hit the blunt on the low mm-hmm. girls was, it was lit but no like Sydney said you definitely need to make sure you have some bad bitches with you security guard was all up on us flirting and whatnot so, yeah, that's what we mean by just unpopular opinions because, I mean, please write in, you know, DM us on Twitter and on Snapchat. No, not on Snapchat. On Twitter and on Instagram. If you do have us personally on Snapchat, you can hit us up You personally. can. Yeah, you can hit us up personally. But, you know, just what are y'all thoughts kind of on females coming to a bachelor party, whether y'all been friends with them since elementary, middle school, or whether you met them in college, you know? I don't think it was any problem. I think it made the situation like a little bit more fun, brought a different dynamic to the I conversation. Think it was. I mean, and also like, yeah, like most of the strippers said, like, where's your wife? But let's be honest, if their wives were there, would they have been as comfortable getting all these dances? Probably not. But since we were there and we were getting dances too, mm-hmm. the niggas was like, shit, let's get it. Like, we ain't judging them because, you know, they're in a relationship or they're married. That ain't none of our business. At the end of the day, our loyalty lies with them because they've been our friends. So, look back. Whatever you do is on hush mouth with me. Okay. I, we, we don't have nothing to go run and tell to nobody for no reason. Not saying anything went down because nothing oh, went down. Nothing at all. But if it were to go down, y'all wouldn't know anyway. So yeah, don't come asking us no motherfucking questions. Right. I don't know nothing. I ain't seen nothing. I ain't hear Girl, nothing. I ain't. What? What? I wasn't no. even there. He was, had his eyes closed with a hand praying emoji. I don't know what you're talking about, girl. Yeah. He was but, just talking about you all night. <laughs> Let me stop. No, really. <laughs> but if y'all go to Austin, go to Foxy's Cabaret and ask for Cleo. Ooh. I ain't even going to say too much. Ooh. Actually, I am. I lied. I am. Y'all go to Foxy's, ask for Cleo. Baby, Cleo, Cleo ain't going to disappoint. Okay, Bambi. y'all might can ask for Bambi because Bambi do a little flashlight mm-hmm. trick where she stick the flashlight where the sun don't shine mm-hmm. and she can make it shine like bright like a diamond on your face. So and she can make it move too. She can get that spotlight move around with you on the spotlight. And she's a beast on the pole. So so cute. Go check out Bambi, but definitely ask for Cleo. Cleo got the body. She got the fat ass. She got the face. She got the personality. She got the niggas throwing money. Her ass was so soft. Like it was so soft. Oh my gosh, so soft. I got the best dance. Other than she didn't do the handstand on me, which I'm really sad about. But I had a really good dance from her. So shout out to Cleo. You know we 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 friends on Instagram now. So you know if ever if ever I'm in Austin or Colleen, I'm gonna hit my girl look. You know what I'm saying for a good time. And I actually had a really good dance from this girl named Star. Star was, was fine too. Fine. Star was a fine little white chocolate. Mm, she was really cute and her ass was soft. She was just soft like. Mm. She kept grabbing on my titties. Oh, she just loved to come sit her ass on me and I didn't mind. Okay. I'll pop that ass right on mama. But yeah, no, the strip club was definitely fun. Shit. If I was a stripper, honestly, I wouldn't even do all that dancing in public with the getting tips. I'm going to talk my way into getting him back there to that private room. Give me $20 a song. That's off top of $20. And you're going to shake your ass on him as you would out here. That's true. So you might as well go ahead and get your... Because if, you, if you're going to dance for tips, you may get $2. You may get $50. You may get $5. You but may you get no back, dollars. Right. Some of them niggas was really standing in there not throwing money. Some bitches in there really didn't deserve any. Like, I Ooh. swear. They didn't deserve it. Them two white girls that came over there. Yeah. First. I, this <laughs> girl's really ass nice. was so flat. I could see her thong. Through, like, I shouldn't be able to see your, your thong between your ass sheets. That means your ass is super flat. <laughs> but, she was really sweet. She came and sat down next to me, and we were, like, chopping it up. And look, she was a nice and my girl. ass, I'm like, <laughs> look, why are these hoes doing all that talking, baby? Throw that ass. What are you doing? All this chit chat, I don't care I about your life. Get comfortable, and I think they were once again. She used me to come sit over there and to talk, and then she. They always use city. Up. When I say not one girl came over there just to sit and have a conversation with me, bitch. If you ain't over here clapping that ass, you need to move around. I ain't come to the strip club for no conversation. I guess I was like a friendly person, <laughs> and that's because she want to get over there. She want to ask questions. She want to get to know the person too. But we ain't on no most no speed dating. Show the stuff. Shake that ass. What are you girl, What about? are your dreams? What are you doing outside of here, girl? What you got going on? And what, what do you think about when you lay down at night? Head ass. <laughs> this, that is so shady. But 
No, they definitely all had the Diamond Players Club story. Like, every girl was like, oh, you know, I have a baby. I'm a mom. I'm I'm dancing to pay my way through school. Like, and that's cool. That's fine. That's dandy. Like, you know, all support to you. That's why you tip. That's why you get them tips. That's why you're going to shake that ass. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah. Like, my name, I don't want to hear your like life story. Like, come on, dance. Do what you're supposed to do and move around. Oh, you just mean that, bro. You don't want to hear them talking. I was like, no, I feel like I mean, you can talk and throw your day. ass, but I don't want you to sit here and like literally some of them girls was coming in like literally just sitting on their lap like this nigga Santa Claus and just telling their life story. Like, yeah. bitch, you taking up my time. Another bitch can come over here, but they're not coming over here because you on my lap. No, girl. But that's where the nigga inside of me comes out. So I just be okay. I'm gonna just sit here. And where did you find this nigga? Inside of you. Sorry. Hey, well, I was born that way. <laughs> and I was born this way. No, but yeah, it was fun. It was lit. Um, we did get home at like five in the morning. Yeah. And I haven't got home that late in a long time because one, I don't like to go out. And so when I say the next morning, I felt like I had been ran over by a train. I only got like two hours of sleep, and mind you, we had to get up and hit the road to Dallas. So we were both tired as hell. Sweet. This girl falling asleep driving, I didn't making think my I, tired ass have to drive. I didn't think I felt that sleepy. I was trying to make it, but she was just feeling uncomfortable. I was making it. This girl, I'm, I look, I'm sleep, okay? I wake up because the car's swerving. So I'm literally up watching her. I see her eyes closed, and then she want to argue with me that she's not closing her eyes. Girl, if you don't pull this car before I beat your ass, because you trying to kill me and you, and I'm not with that. Like, I still got all these lies. I ain't even met the love of my life. Yet. Like, come on now. Don't kill me yet, Lord. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm going to let her slide on that one, okay, y'all. Okay, yeah, mind your Look, you in my business. Don't do that. <laughs> For those of you listening, y'all know about that statement she just said. If you were real, Look, if you real friends. Let them all get into it right quick. <laughs> but, um, no, this weekend was really good. It did, everything did work out besides the flat tire that we caught oh 30 my minutes gosh. outside of our hotel. Literally. My and mind tire, you, we're on a freaking time crunch because we have a wedding to go to. Yeah. My tire, like, just ripped apart just literally ripped apart while we were driving because at first I was like the light usually would have been on and like I know I put air in it and I'm like is it a nail no the tire literally like ripped apart it was ridiculous so luckily this nice man stopped and helped us yes we know that you're not supposed to have like strangers help you we know that people are crazy these days but it was two of us and he was he it was, was nice yeah it was he was a nice black man yeah. he was by himself it was bright daylight. We was on the highway. And he said he saw what happened and that he, like, actually turned around to come help us. Yeah, so that's really nice. Um, yeah. I'm yeah. glad he saw what happened because I was fucking asleep. I didn't even hear what happened. You heard what she said, y'all? She was asleep. Exactly. Exactly. The bullshit I'm talking about. I'm tired. The tire on the flat. We in the rush to get to the wedding. I'm just... I'm like, I right, call Geico. <laughs> yeah, she like, I'm going to call Geico. I said... She didn't say nothing after she contacted them. I said, well, how long did it say? She said an hour. Excuse me, bitch. The wedding is in an hour. We cannot wait here for an hour. So, yeah. Anyways, luckily, the nice man came, helped us change it. Took, like, nothing but 10, 15 minutes. Got back on the road. Got yeah. to the hotel. Got ready for the wedding. Thank God I had a spare. Because if I didn't have a spare, we would have been fucked. And good thing we were in her car. Because if we were in my car, my car does not have a spare. And we would have been fucked. Because <laughs> even if the... AAA people came or interchange people came. I have to have a tire for them to put on. And mind you, for all my my in Malibu people, our car don't come with a jack either. Oh wow! So basically, now we would have gone Geico. They have it. They'll just tell you to a roadside assistance. Yeah, you that's assistance. too much. That's and mind you, that's the cost. They, yeah, you would have to just get towed to a, 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 a open um, autom- automotive. Place. I don't know what the fuck I'm saying. Exactly. <laughs> well, luckily, you know, we got to the hotel. We got all that covered. We did Uber to the wedding. 
Yeah, 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 we did. I, I, well, yeah, I wanted to Uber because I was like, let's just not put any more stress on the car. And I was like, it's an open bar. I think we both deserve to drink and not worry. So I think that was the smartest thing Sydney <laughs> said that day. Because when I say I got wasted, wait, and I wasn't too far behind her. So. Boy, my eyes were closed from the time I left the reception to the next morning. Supposedly, we smoked two blunts. She I rolled, rolled a blunt. both of them. Don't even remember oh, wait, I think I rolling a blunt because I was my eyes were closed. Like I just told you, my eyes were closed. Like, dude, I remember when we got out the Uber, we walked to the car, and that was really the last of what I remember. Um, I remember bits and pieces. I remember Sydney making me waste my large cup of water in she the elevator. She continues to say that I made her waste this. Who made water? me waste it, then, Sydney? I asked her to unzip my jumpsuit. So that I would have one less step while we race to the bathroom. Mind you, when she tells me to unzip it, as soon as the elevator's door open, this bitch takes off running. I'm in heels. I, don't I got water. Ho- That's why she made me mess my water. Now my ice cold water that I was going to drink because I'm drunk and thirsty is now on the floor. I don't remember it that way. Then the next thing I remember is almost falling in the shower and you were nowhere to help me. Because I went downstairs to get more towels. Oh, almost died, y'all. Then, I remember when I was in the bed, and I was about to go to sleep, I was thirsty, and I was like, oh, my water's gone, and then you come and poured, like, half of your water in there, and I was like, I don't want this, and I poured it on the carpet. I was just like, I don't want this in my cup. It was fun. We were wasted as hell. Like, I haven't been that drunk since college. When you're hanging with Sydney. Mm-hmm. Y'all know I start with the tequila sprites. <laughs> my ass did, too. <laughs> then I went to Pino. Then I went back. I was literally alternating tequila and Sprite and wine. Tequila yep. and Sprite and wine. Both then I went to two different wines. Why did I do that? Bad decision, Nigeria. Very and bad decision. the other two girls at our tables were actually drinking martinis. They had about two two martinis apiece and a couple glasses of wine. Like I told my mom, I was fine at the reception. Besides me being emotional, but you know, that was just like love in the air and me being drunk. You know, it was just like, I wasn't, you know, crying like a little bitch, but mm. that was like a little, a little tear in my eye, you know what I'm saying? But, um, no, I was fine at the reception, but like I said, once we got to the hotel is when everything was like going around in circles. Like I couldn't even open my eyes because... When I opened my eyes, it was just like too much going on. So I had to just close them and just breathe. You know, when you just, you that drunk, all you can do is close your eyes and breathe. That that's that means you too damn drunk. That was me in Arkansas at another wedding. I was just in the bed next to her eating chocolate. Not next to her, in the bed. Yeah, two separate beds. But I was eating chocolate while she was feeling like throwing up. Yeah. I was eating chocolate covered strawberries. Because she can't eat strawberries. So I didn't get her any. Right, and I was, I don't even remember. The last thing I remember was pouring that water out on the carpet, and then I was asleep. Then I woke up at 5 in the morning, sick as fuck. Yeah. Sick as fuck, y'all, like, sick. I had to leave the hotel and go to the gas station to get some Gatorade, Sprite. Like, I needed to, like, have the air blasting on me, like, no. But I had a great time, you know. Congratulations to the Macaulay's. Mariam and Internet, so happy for y'all. Beautiful wedding. Beautiful. I could just feel the love. I've never met y'all, but I felt all the love from y'all, from your family. Simply beautiful. Yes, and oh, it's just, Mariam's such a good friend, and it's just, I, I love her. And I know she wants to be a guest on the podcast, so be looking out for Mariam. And if anybody out there wants to be a guest, don't hesitate to DM us. Um, and let us know because we be looking for guests. So if y'all want to be a guest, it doesn't matter if you're male or female, you're more than welcome to be a guest on the show. Definitely. If you're in the Houston area, yes. If you have some, but let me preface with, if you have uh, something or an issue that you want to bring to the podcast, you know, um, so yeah, we do want to take or a, a spicy topic. Oh yeah. Or a spicy topic because we want, I guess we could take a moment now just to say, you know, we are still new and everything, and so we're still kind of shaping how we want this to go. And we think we're moving in towards a direction of spicier topics and just more controversial statements and definitely bringing more guests of the male and female um, and different sexualities also. We For want sure. to bring all of that to the table. So we really want to hear y'all's voices. We want to amplify Houston. So 
just reach out to us for those things and follow us at Barcoded Chats on all social media. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So that was our weekend. It was pretty damn lit. I ain't gonna lie to you. The only downside about Austin was our Airbnb was an hour from Austin. Bro, these niggas did not tell nobody that day. We going to Austin, they making it sound like they got something in Austin. No, but in, in their defense, they were on a boat the next day, so that's why they had to be further out to be closer to the boat. Right. But still, yeah, they ain't tell nobody. So when we drunk, coming drunk, from the strip club. sleepy because I had worked that day, drove all the way from Houston, went straight to Bombshells, back yeah. door, went straight to We had to get dressed club. in the parking lot because they was like, we're not going back home after we go to Bombshells because home is an hour away. They didn't even tell us home was an hour away until I'm driving. I'm like, bro, this is far. She sleep. Mm-hmm. Mind y'all, Austin is windy as hell. I'm drunk. I'm sleepy. Bro, they swerving. I'm swerving. It's deer everywhere. I'm just like, Lord, please let me make it to my bed. No, really. We was in the strip club. This bitch is falling asleep, no, bro. No, out of my eyes briefly. You close your eyes. She always open. say, I'm just, I'm not even they asleep. I'm resting my shut eyes. And open. No, no. Yo, her briefly, we're like 10 minutes long. She think it's brief. And we over here looking at this bitch in the strip club like, wow, this bitch sleep. <laughs> we, it took three niggas to start falling asleep for us to go home. These motherfuckers are trying to party to the strip club closed. It took three niggas to start falling asleep. We was like, okay, let's go. We Sad. tried. We really tried. Sis. All right, now, guys, you know we're about to get into this nice Potomac review. I'm actually sad that it wasn't the episode I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be the episode where the husbands fought, but they tricked us because they showed us last episode that the next episode was when the husbands fought, but when it came to this episode, it was just they were still talking about the damn fight. They got to entice y'all. They got Yeah, they got to entice y'all. They didn't want to let y'all know this was the next episode was going to be more talking about the damn fight. Yes, and everybody tired of it. Yes, we know Monique is wrong. Yes, we know Candace is mad. And what we didn't know is that Karen told her she would press charges and Giselle said that. And just like, um, I really can't remember who said it, but somebody said, um, they know that Candace looks at Karen as a mother figure. So why would Karen tell her I would press charges knowing that she's going to probably follow in that lead? That's very true. Um, they have a very strong bond and the fact that Karen said that and then her mother backdoored, her mom was cracking me up actually during that whole exchange talking about, she gonna kill who? <laughs> yeah, and even her, yeah, her mama is like, oh yeah, this is when we contact the attorney. Yeah, she's like, what grown woman fighting in the street? <laughs> she was cracking like, me up. Like um, Candace said, scrapping. <laughs> scrapping. Black women scrapping. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. But I did like that Karen took Giselle and Ashley with her to the farm. Just like Giselle said, I really don't know why she's in this parade, I'm which dead. was very random. I'm dead. But, I mean, hey, just she's like they said, Like Karen, Giselle said, she's done a lot, though, for that small town. Yeah, just like, yeah, that's what Giselle saying. Like, Karen is the Beyonce of that town, like... Because she got out and she actually married good and she's actually have something going for herself. And she on fucking TV. That too, yeah. But, before, but also before she was on TV, she already had money. She was living in Potomac. You know, her kids went to nice schools. No. Yeah. Both but her kids in I thought it was real funny that she rode in this Bentley in this homecoming parade in this little country town. Girl, because she extra. But that's funny that she took them. That's that cute. That little blue dress is cute, too. Actually. Yeah, that little number is cute. I'm surprised that Ashley didn't bring the baby. I was proud of her for not bringing that baby. I was like, yeah, you're right. It's only two hours away. You can sleep one night and then go home the next day. It's two hours away. You'll be just fine. I'm proud of her because she's going to have to learn how to do that because she kind of been doing a lot bringing that baby. I wasn't expecting Robin to meet up with Ashley. I, I, I mean... I mean, I, not Ashley Cannon. I was not expecting Robin to be it. I, I, I half ass thought it was Monique. I ain't even gonna lie. Before I thought it was gonna be Robin at that goddamn door. I thought it was her mama, too, actually. I didn't realize her and her mama was having an outside talk. So her, her and her mama talked in the, at her house. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that was kind of a shock when it was Robin. And she really had me cracking up because then she talking about, 
But enough about her. Um, I don't want to gossip. But yeah. The, the, I just wanted to breathe because the blog. Yeah, the, the fact that she was whispering and they were still putting on the caption. Like, I'm like, girl, you on fucking camera. The fuck you think they can't hear you? I'm right. Like, I heard they say you own. Yeah, like, <laughs> and then they made sure to type $90,000. Like, yeah, in, in case, case y'all didn't hear her. Right. Like, in case y'all didn't hear her, she said $90,000. Bitch, why you trying to whisper on camera? But I'm glad Juan isn't mad because he's like I've been through it like all we can do is get through it together I'm guessing like and she she did it to herself she said that she was trying to be her own accountant yeah that was herself. a dumb that was a dumb thing because girl you got you got money and I'm pretty sure I don't know if y'all got any businesses but you trying to be your own accountant yeah girl you should have known that was gonna go south yeah <laughs> yeah girl she that shit's funny but Robin and Candace, that was an interesting little talk, but you know, Robin had to go over there and be messy and tell her what Candace and what yeah, Monique said. And that she wasn't remorseful. Mm-hmm. That really hurt her when she said she wasn't remorseful. Poor Candace. And really, the only reason why Candace is now, I mean, the only reason why Monique is now feeling some type of way is because she talked to her pastor, and her pastor was really saying, like, this has nothing to do with. This has nothing to do with um, Candace. This has something to do with you and the inside of you. And then she started thinking like, oh shit, maybe I am the problem. No, you are. <laughs> because you're making her upset about all of the stuff you got going on at home and the rumors that's going around about you cheating on your husband. And that's why she fought Candace. Let's be real. This had nothing to do with Candace. Candace didn't do nothing to piss her off that much. Like I said last episode, I'm going to repeat myself. You should have pulled the girl aside on episode two or whatever you ever episode Giselle opened her big ass mouth to you. And you should have said, yo, Candace, what's up with you hanging out with Sharice? Point blank period, because that's what you're mad about, sis. That's exactly what you're mad about. And that's what you beat her head in about. That's why you snatched that girl weed like you ain't had no sense. No sense. And now she's like, oh, I need to apologize to her. I need to talk to her. And then even uh, <clears throat> even the husband's like, oh, I need to call Chris. Like, first of all, you could have been called Chris. You could have been called him and like, really could have. said, like, hey, you know, I heard about what happened with our wives. You know, I hope that doesn't change anything with us. Like, you could have been did that. He probably don't. But let's think about this. Let's back up. It's Chris. He, all, he a nigga of all niggas. What the niggas already do, don't talk about shit. And then... He probably don't know what to say because Monique not even speaking to Candace. I would also be a little. I probably would have reached out sooner, but like I would be. I wouldn't have said anything like the next day because at the end of the day, my wife just put hands on your wife and right. beat her ass. What am I supposed to say? I don't know how you feeling about me. Right. Because he Chris kind of does have every right to be like I can't fuck with you. Yeah. Can I bring my wife around you? Like how are we supposed to be friends? Your wife want to beat my wife ass. Right. Yeah, no, that's true. For sure. And I'm just wondering, I'm just, I can't wait till Monique tries to talk to Candace because I want to know if Candace is even willing to talk to her and if she's even going to hear her out because she already had Robin come to her and say she's not remorseful. So she might think everything that this little cry, this little facade, I'm sorry, she might feel like that's a lie. But my thing is, it w- will Monique even reach out because at the end of the episode, they show that Candace press, press his charges. Right. So, did she do that before Monique had the chance to pick up the phone? Because I'm at that sure. point, which, did she pick up the phone and still reach out? I'm reading the blogs. You pressing charges against me, bitch. What right. the fuck we got to talk about? Yeah. Because you obviously don't care. Well, you're not You're not going to be sympathetic to me. You finna press charges against me. Right. And if this, if this, I'm sorry, doesn't make you stop them charges, then no, I'm not sorry. Bitch. Like, we just going to have beef. I don't know. What to do at that point? Side note, I do feel really bad for watching Karen right now have to go through on TV her husband like literally falling Falling out out of love with her and like dissing her like that shit in that editing they did when he closed that door. Y'all did not have to y'all did not have to edit that car door slamming that many fucking times. Right, and then she was still out there with her lips. Yeah, and then her standing there in front of her girlfriends asking for a kiss. You couldn't at least have even kissed her just to kiss her for her friends to say face 
least like there's at least fucking saving face. Everybody with a little bit of money knows about that. Nigga couldn't even save face. He just straight up said, all right, see you. Have a safe trip and shut the fucking car door on her puckered lips. Like, girl. Yeah, no, no, sir. I would have sent a real angry text right after that situation. I'm yeah, be quite honest. I would have been real embarrassed. Very, highly. Probably just would have texted that word, embarrassed. Well, oh, okay. That's what we doing now? <laughs> and then the the clip for the next episode when they were at the table and they find out that Candace press charges and they were like, is her goal, is her, is your ultimate goal for her to go to jail? And she's like, yeah, why not? And they're like, oh shit. And that's my thing. Okay, so y'all so mad at my nigga. She did so such wrong. But what now? Y'all mad yeah, that yeah. Candace want to press charges against this? Now, now y'all think she too went far? too far? Right. But y'all did. But y'all was so ready to condemn her for fighting and for breaking this black female image that y'all never upholded. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm telling my mama. Like, just because you out there fighting, don't mean. I mean, yeah, that's that's that. Y'all shouldn't be doing that because y'all too damn old. But y'all acting like out here arguing in public and doing all that cussing and stuff is is not as bad. Y'all still look ignorant. Y'all still looking like ghetto black women, whether you're putting your hands on them or not. Or if you're just getting loud and cursing, it's still out of character. So y'all, y'all all on Monique. Yes, Monique is wrong. But also think about what you've done in the past. Like... <laughs> Where have you always been a nice little role model for your kids? Because right. y'all all want to say, your kids, we raising black women. This is a- yes, y'all are. So also make sure you're setting a good example for your own child. Robin, while you sat there on stage talking about beating Ashley ass, because it definitely circulated around Twitter again. Yikes. Like, girl, come on. But I do think whenever Candace comes out with Ashley writing this statement on Monique, that's going to be a whole different beef too. And I think that's what causes the husbands to fight because it was Ashley's husband and Candace's husband that fight. I mean, yeah, yeah, it was, it wasn't Monique's husband. You're right. So, and, and Ashley's wrong for writing that statement because she wasn't even there to see the fight because she was in the bathroom. So I'm not understanding why you write a statement on something you didn't even see. You just write a statement because you don't like the girl. Exactly. Which ain't even right. These ladies, these ladies, they don't so fail to surprise us every week. They keep coming back with more. This drama keeps building. But next episode does look like it's going to give us what we've been looking for. Yes, it might be the fight with the husbands. I mean, it has to be the fight with the husbands. Like, what else are they going to show? <laughs> I mean, so... Who knows? They got so much footage. But yes, stay tuned in for next week because, of course, we're going to review the next Potomac episode and whatever craziness happens to us this week. Like I said, if you want to be a guest on our special podcast, Barcoded Chats, don't forget to email us at barcodedchats at gmail.com or DM us on Twitter or Instagram at Barcoded Chats. So for all my out-of-town people... Come with us. All my H-Town people, stay with us. We're in the Houston streets of Barcoded Chats. Let's get it.